Cameron, what do you like more, playing golf or doing trick shots? Probably doing trick shots. Cameron Middleton just turned eight years old a few days ago. And as he puts it, golf is his life. He already has two hole-in-ones. He's won several first place medals on the junior tour powered by Under Armour. But what he's known for all over the world are his trick shots. It's a big reason he has more than 10,000 followers on Instagram. Cameron is described as a trick shot artist. You guys don't describe him that way. Why is that? Well, because yes, he is a trick shot artist and we have tons of fun with trick shots. I like people to see the golfer side of him because without the golf club in his hand, the trick shots wouldn't exist. He wins enough tournaments, he wins his divisions. So to me, he's more of a competitive golfer who enjoys doing trick shots, not just with golf, but with anything. I mean, if there's a ball in his hands, whether it's a soccer ball or basketball, he's thinking of some fun way to throw it over the backboard or kick it off a wall or something. So. You know, to me, he's a golfer first and trick shot is kind of second. How did you get into doing trick shots? Just as soon as COVID hit, we were like, what do we do? So we just started doing trick shots. Thank you to COVID, I guess, the trick shots kind of developed and it's just something fun that we do in the house. It's not something that like he can do outside of the home unless, you know, like today he almost chipped it in and we were like, yeah, trick shot, you know. Congratulations today. I saw you hit the pin, almost chipped it in. Do you think that working on your trick shots, that being so good at trick shots, helps you on the golf course? Yes, because I think if I'm 30 yards out, sometimes I have to hit it that hard for trick shots, so I think it helps with my distance control. Yeah, it helps with the short game, you know, because he's always using his wedges at home when he does them. So like just yesterday in our practice round, he had a great shot on the green and it happened to roll off into the rough and it was, it was, it was actually buried. So I said, just flop it like you're at home. Just open the face and just do your pancake flop shot. And he did it and it almost went in. He almost, you know, actually you know, popped it in. What is your favorite trick shot? Probably the one where I hit it down the slinky. My favorite is the slinky where we hung the slinky from the ceiling and he chipped it through. I've seen the kid do amazing things, but I was like, oh, this one might be a challenge. And I have to say with his trick shots, those reactions are genuine screams that come out of that child because it's so exciting to see him achieve that. So the slinky is always by far my favorite. Yeah, for me, I think when he was four and there's a basket on a fan and he's got no shirt on, no shoes on, and he chipped it in and he throws his arm up in the air and he's so small in the video. I just love all of that because it's so real and natural and innocent. And I just love that one. You're super laid back. You're a very chill kid. How important is it to you to have fun on the course? I think it's very important because if I'm too serious, I feel like I'm not having fun and I'm just out here for no reason. Do you feel that him being so relaxed and having so much fun doing his trick shots helps him on the golf course? Absolutely. He's in the driver's seat at all times. We, and like, I can't say that enough about junior golf. We see so many parents come out and they're just so angry and strict and our focus is fun at all times. Um, and so that's really what we try to model his golf game after, his trick shots after. We just try to do it the most easy way for him because forcing him to do it doesn't make any sense for us. Does it work for any kid this age? No, not really. I mean, you have a little one, you understand when they're not feeling it or you tell them they have to go out and practice, you, you get a terrible result. You think that you will be raising a seven-year-old that's amazing at these trick shots. He's kind of a little star, isn't he? Yes, and he's made it all on his own. I've, I've struggled to manage his Instagram. I get a lot of requests from different people and I try to be the mom, you know, that allows everybody and I've made everything public for people to see, but I still, you know, have to manage the negative comments and the, oh, this is fake, but you know what? Like he's earned every bit of the notoriety that he gets. What is it like to be recognized on Instagram, to be Instagram famous? Basically, I think it's they're... pretty cool that everyone can recognize me and they know me from Instagram. What is it that you like about that? Everything. Being on social media doesn't take away from him. It, it adds to him. He gets rewarded for what he can do because there's not a lot of kids his age that can do the trick shots that he does. I, I don't know a lot of adults that can do the trick shots 
that he does. So it, it's good for him. It, it's a reward in his own way. He brightens somebody else's day. You know, I have a lot of people that reach out and they're like, oh, my son was in the backyard trying to do the trick shots that Cameron does. And that's rewarding to me. And I, I know for him as well. We were in Scotland and we saw a kid from Instagram who follows him and they recognized each other. So we're at the British Open and they recognize Cam, you know, and they're thousands of miles away. They've never spoken or talked on the phone or anything. And they recognize them. Or we go to the Disney, you know, and we see, you know, the older kids and they're like, oh, there's Cameron going by. And I'm like, who are those kids? And Cameron's like, I don't know who they are. How cool is it for you when you walk to the tee box and a lot of the kids already know you from Instagram? I think that's very cool that everyone knows me and then, and they like me as well from Instagram. It's really cool to see that. And that a lot of that came, especially like I said, during COVID. You know, the grandparents weren't able to see him anymore. It was really sad. So we started doing trick shots at home and her dad would post them on Facebook or we'd post them in Tiny Beans for the grandparents to see when they would log in, you know, every day. And it just kind of blossomed from that. And now people from all over the country send us requests. Hey, do this, here, chip it over a golf cart. Try this shot, try this shot, you know? So that to me has been very exciting. You know, like she said, there are some negative people that think it's staged or fake, but we know the truth that none of it is, and it's all hard work. Sometimes he does it on the first try, sometimes it takes him an hour. Sometimes it's really hard. How long does it take you to master a trick shot? Sometimes it'll take five minutes, sometimes it'll take 35. Are there sponsorships? Is there an NIL that's going on? <laughs> is is there some financial gains going on with, with the Wouldn't little trick nice? shot artists? Not yet. Um, we're hoping that the NIL comes down a little bit. I, I think right now the youngest player to be signed um, at a futures contract is Puma and um, he's 12 and we love him. He's great. He follows Cam so we get to talk back and forth with him. Um, but hopefully in the future we've had a lot of people reach out and you know Under Armour sends him clothes, Puma sends him clothes and they like to see him do stuff in you know their brand. Um, but as far as money you know no one pays him. I don't want to mess up any amateur status or anything like that but he gets joy out of knowing that other people watch his stuff, you know, take it all in and then try to copy what he's doing. I, I think he sees a lot in that. So hopefully in the future though, I, I would like some scholarships maybe. You want to send clubs, that'd be cool, whatever. When you see a shot, do you think that your mind is thinking in a way of trick shots? Mm, sometimes. As we've seen in some of his trick shots, there are there's some product placement. Uh, pizza rolls or things like that. Are you picking things that he specifically likes or how do, how do you choose those? So with Snow Days, the pizza roll company, they actually reached out to us um, and said that they were trying to grow their brand. They're from Chicago. Um, and so they were trying to come into the Florida market and they said, hey, do you think you could pull this off? Have him do a trick shot with a golf club in our pizza roll. And we did, I mean, it was frozen and he chipped it in, you know, the beauty of shutting the lid and reopening it, we made it look like it was cooked. Pizza rolls were great for me because I'm the one that ate them. They all had <laughs> they all had cheese, so, you know, he wasn't able to eat them, unfortunately. But when they reached out and I researched them and I'm like, mm, these look like really, really, you know, good, good food. So I ended up eating them and it was great. Going online and featuring the product and then picking somebody to, to get one, you know. The I giveaways mean, yeah, that we do. I mean, that's, that's excellent. And the kids that win are so surprised. So what's in it for you endorsing these products? We find that the companies that are driven towards junior golf are the ones that we reach out and say, hey, you know, we're available if you guys want to do something. A lot like the giveaways that we did for Christmas, those were all companies that follow him, that have sent him stuff and that said, you know, we don't want anything in return. If you happen to do something with us and you can just share a story, we'd be honored, you know? So, but we try to take it a step further and do a post for them if we can. And, and there's companies that reach out that we say no. I mean, it doesn't really apply to Cam. Like you said, like what's in it for him? Well, besides the pizza rolls, of course, because I ate them, but like, you know, anything else that's too adultish or something that wouldn't suit him, we're just, we just say no. Tell me how it felt the very first time you got your hole in one. I couldn't believe that that happened. So his fame and notoriety came from a few hole in ones. How did that happen? Well, my first home one was an epic fail. I was like, I'm gonna film this. I, you know, maybe I just got that mom gut feeling he was gonna get a hole in one. So I took my phone out and I went to hit the video and I took a picture and I was devastated. I was like, oh my gosh, how do I, you know, mess this up? You don't only have one hole in one, you have two hole in ones. Tell me about that and how that led you to Good Morning America. Well, I think because I called this the hole in one. I think that's why they got me on Good Morning America. We got to the 14th hole at Stony Brook and he said, Mommy, I'm gonna hit a hole in one. And it was hot. And I was like, okay, Cam. So I got out 
and I just turned the video on and that's just become a thing now. Oh All par threes I filmed because I got so lucky that day and I got even more lucky that I was able to run behind him and not trip over him, you know, because he was so small and I couldn't see where he was going. Um, and once I filmed it, I was literally shaking. I was texting my husband and I texted my dad. I'm like, you're not going to believe this. I actually filmed a hole in one. I know it doesn't happen often. Um, so we got home, we posted it on Instagram for everyone to celebrate. And it was a couple of days later that Good Morning America reached out. There were so many people to pick for Good Morning America and they picked a seven year old. That's very awesome to me. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world, just like meeting Ricky. What was it like meeting Ricky Fowler? I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I, I've never seen something more cool in my life. Tell me about your day chasing him to get a picture. As soon as I was done, I could barely walk. It was pretty tiring doing that. <laughs> it was pretty tiring meeting Ricky Fowler? Yes. <laughs> Do you identify yourself with Ricky Fowler? Like a little bit of a rebel, laid back? Yes. So Good Morning America, right up there with meeting Ricky Fowler? Yes. Pretty sweet for a seven-year-old. <laughs> You said that, that he enjoys seeing the likes and seeing how people like it. Do you feel that that drives him, that that fuels him, that that does him good to see that success translate onto the Of course, the yeah. Life I mean, he, he sees the fruit of his labor. You know, when he sees so many people commenting things that are positive, or when people reach out to us that we don't know, or friends and family, oh my God, I saw that you know shot you did yesterday. Puts a big smile on his face, you know, he loves it. Do you feel a lot of pressure to perform well on the golf course because you are good at trick shots? No. I don't feel any pressure, even in tournaments like this. We have our highs, we have our lows, but I'm always most impressed by how well composed he is on the course. I would agree. I love that he doesn't get upset, slam his clubs, cry, um, not want to play anymore, talk about quitting, uh, those kind of things um, that we've seen you know, elsewhere. And we love that he wants to go back and do it again. Uh, he's never wanted to like take a break and you know, wait a month, he wants to get back out there. So we love, I guess, the, the bounce back, the resiliency. What do you do to keep so cool? I just make sure that the other kids don't bother me and I make sure that if they're crying or something, I don't pay attention to that and I just play my game. I think a lot of that translates when we play tournaments. Sometimes he's a little silly and we try to reel him back in, but we never want him being the super serious kid because that's not going to be fun and that's not his personality. Yes, so him anyways. why try to make him be someone he's not? He's always going to be the fun loving kid, probably even when he's 16, 17 playing golf, or at least we hope so. So mom and dad, yes. what are your golf goals for your child? I always tell him, just go to college. If you can get a college scholarship to some nice college somewhere outside of where we are, I know mom wants him to stay nearby, Okay, but if he goes to Texas or Oklahoma or North Carolina or wherever it takes him and college is paid for because of his golf that he grinded while he was 15, 16, 17 years old, then that would be great. If he goes on tour or whatever, I'm not even gonna say that, then that's all extra. If he can just go to college and have you know a great four years and meet a bunch of lifelong friends and make those connections, then it was all worth it. My golf goal for him is to keep it fun, to keep it real, to stay true to himself and I would love to see him play on tour, um, but that's just my dream, not his. I mean, he says he wants to, to win a green jacket and I hope he can achieve that one day. What are your goals as a golfer? To make it on the Masters and to get a college scholarship for golf. Do you think your trick shots are gonna get you there? Yes. Keep on moving on. Mm -hmm. Let's go.